All right, I'd like to get some practice drawing resonance hybrids. And to do that, we need to draw the resonance patterns, and then we can combine them into the hybrids. So this uh, video will give us a little more practice drawing resonance hybrids as well. With this first molecule, we can observe several possible resonance patterns. The pi bond between two dissimilar elements. Uh, there is lone pairs here on the oxygen, which I should draw in. And that would give us the allylic lone pair resonance pattern. And as I like to tell students, if you have opportunities to start with the pi bond between two different elements, you should do that because it gives you a lot of options for uh, the next few steps. So I'm going to start there. And that gives us a, uh, so if we have a negative charge on the oxygen and a positive charge on this carbon that was connected to the oxygen. That can allow us to do allylic uh, cation using the pi bond. New pi bond here, still minus on the O. We got a plus where that pi bond left. And I'm going to draw the lone pairs on this oxygen here because that gives us our final pattern of lone pair adjacent to cation. And I can draw that. I'm going to put that kind of down here. And now there's a plus charge on the oxygen. And you'll notice we still have zero total charge. We started with zero. We created a plus and a minus, and we kept that plus and a minus throughout our resonance patterns. Now for the hybrid, let's try to draw that in blue here. I'm going to draw each single bond as it was in the starting material. And I'm going to draw a dashed line wherever there is a pi bond that has moved or undertaken, undergone resonance anywhere in the molecule. So there is a dashed line here where the CO pi bond used to be. There's a dashed line here because we created the pi bond there. The dashed line here because we started with a pi bond there, but we didn't end with it. And there's a dashed line to the oxygen because we ended up with a pi bond there, but we didn't start with one. And so we have dashed lines where there were pi bonds that participated in resonance. And now we need to add partial charges. Wherever there was a charge that appeared but wasn't in the molecule all the time, we'd put a delta minus or a delta plus. So that oxygen gets a delta minus. And the carbon next to it gets a delta plus. And the carbon here gets a delta plus, And so does the oxygen. And these are just qualitative uh, partial charges. But if you wanted to, you could recognize that the minus charge should be three times the size of each plus charge because there's only one partial minus and there's three different partial positives. And they all have to add up to zero because our molecule is overall neutral. And so then this is the resonance hybrid. So that's how we draw the resonance hybrid. It is an average of all of the resonance structures and it gives us our best picture of the molecule as a whole. So it tells us that this molecule, which is normally how we would draw it, has a partial positive charge right here. So it might be attractive to negative charges at this position and it has a large partial negative charge on this O, so it might be attractive to uh, positive charges at this position. That's what the hybrid can help us do. So it can help us predict the reactivity of these molecules, which is a topic for uh, later in the semester. Let's look at this second molecule on my screen here. Uh, I can observe that there's the pi bond, um, sorry, the perfectly alternating pi bonds in a ring. We call that the aromatic resonance pattern. I've got a pi bond over here, but it doesn't have a plus charge. It doesn't have a, a lone pair at all. So I would say this is an isolated pi bond, and I don't have any resonance possibilities for it. So I think there might be only one resonance structure here, or second resonance structure, one additional one. These three arrows can be drawn in any direction. You're going to get to the same place. And we get to this molecule. And again, I'm going to ignore this pi bond. We'd call it an isolated pi bond or a localized pi bond. In fact, that's such an important point. Let me write that here.
And now for the hybrid, I'm going to draw this in blue again. We would draw all of the single bonds. I'm going to put the pi bond in here as a line because, again, it's not participating in resonance, so it's going to be fixed there. But then the other pi bonds that moved around the ring kind of draw a circle with our dots. Uh, and your circle can look kind of hexagon-like or it can be a complete circle. That is totally fine. This is a great resonance hybrid uh, for this second molecule. Moving on to this third molecule, let's look for some resonance possibilities. Uh, there is some lone pairs that I should draw on this oxygen. And then looking at the lone pair on the nitrogen, it is next to a pi bond, so that's probably allylic lone pair pattern that I might be able to start with. These lone pairs here are not next to a cation, they're not next to a pi bond, and so they are probably localized, much like that single pi bond we saw on the previous uh, molecule. So let me write that here. And let's get started with some green arrows. We're going to draw the allylic lone pair resonance pattern. And that's where the lone pair becomes a pi bond and the pi bond becomes a lone pair. And I would put a negative charge right here. That's a negative uh, with a, uh, sorry, a lone pair. And I put a plus charge on the end because it gave up its lone pair. It's now sharing it. It has a formal charge of plus one. There is one additional resonance pattern I could draw. You probably maybe recognize it already. It's a, it is another allylic lone pair. Now my lone pair and negative charge are on the end carbon. And that's really it. If I were to draw, say, this arrow using that new lone pair, I'd essentially be going backwards. So there's really no reason to do that. Um, and we are done. So now it's time to draw the hybrid. Uh, so again, I'm going to draw all of the sig sigma bonds that existed before I started this process. I'm going to draw those lone pairs explicitly because they don't participate in resonance. And then I'm going to put dashed lines all along this leftmost carbon uh, carbon chain from the nitrogen because I've been forming some pi bonds there or, or removing some of the pi bonds there. And I have some partial charges. There's a delta plus on the N, delta minus on the last carbon, and a delta minus on the middle carbon. And those, again, come from the formal charges that I calculated during my resonance structure. So that's the hybrid there. Let's get one more practice. Uh, here we have a ring structure. It's got a positive charge right here. I've got a pi bond here and a couple there. Looks like I could do a number of allylic cation resonance patterns. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. First one could be from the top. My cation moves up to the top carbon, and that gives me this structure. Now, it really doesn't look like there's any of the simple patterns that we can do from this new structure, but I could go back and maybe get, grab a red pen, and I could draw a different allylic cation and end up with this structure here. And I could draw one more. And I would get a positive charge on this corner. And let's see, I can keep going actually. Whenever I have a new positive charge, I'm going to investigate potential uh, allylic cations. And so if I draw that one, I think I'll get a different structure. Let's hope I don't run out of room here. And I think I can do at least one more. 
These are all allylic cation patterns. And if I draw one more, let's just put the arrows down there, but I think it'll take me back to the beginning. So that pattern should put a positive charge right here. That's the same as this one, so I'm not going to bother to draw that, so let's erase that red arrow. All right, and I also want to point out that I could have gotten from could have gotten from this structure to this structure via a couple of uh, arrows. Uh, so that would have taken me right to there. So it's possible you could do that. And if you had drew, drawn these black arrows on a quiz or exam, I would have given credit. Uh, I'm sure your instructor, if it's not me, would have also given credit. But it's not following one of the five basic patterns. So we want to stress at the beginning, when we're first learning this, that we want to try to draw just the pattern if we can. We don't want to combine them uh, because that can lead to some confusion with new learners. Uh, all right, so it's time to draw the hybrid of this last structure. I'm going to draw it here. And I have my single bond skeleton. And I think there's pi bonds going to be pretty much everywhere. And it'll look something like this. And par partial positives should be at the top, in the middle here, and down on the corner there, this corner, this corner, and this corner. So that's a pretty interesting molecule. There's only one carbon here that does not have a partial positive charge. Uh, so those are spread around very equally. Uh, and we'd say that this partial charge is very stabilized because it is spread across six different carbons.